Hey, how are you? Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. It is a rainy Monday, but I am feeling this amazing energy. I just came off this great weekend with a girlfriend and uh, we do it once a year. So I've just, I'm bringing all this energy to you because I just had this great, we had great talks and lots of love and just understanding each other. And she always helps me be my best version of me. So um, I hope you feel that today too, that this energy is coming from me to you. And I really appreciate you watching. So today, uh, this is one of three. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of um, live training for you today. So this is the first, I've done Facebook Lives before, but not necessarily training. So where it's coming from is from this little ebook. So you can download this ebook, go to debbieslewis.com backslash five steps, and you can download this. So if you wanna follow along, I'm not gonna do it verbatim today, but um, some of the highlights that I'm gonna talk about are gonna come out of this, this ebook. So uh, it's a pretty neat little, neat little booklet. It really gives a great summary on um, all things vision board and where it begins. And so that's what I wanna start with today. I'm gonna to talk about dreaming. So it's, again, it's, the timing is amazing because as I said, I just had this awesome weekend with my best friend and she helps me dream. Um, but one of the things that I would say for you as well is it's really important to, a couple of things. A, have someone like her that you have in your life, like I have with my girlfriend, where I completely trust her and that I can throw out wild ideas and she doesn't judge me, she just listens or she bounces them back to me, right? And so they're, they're really big ideas. So have that person and think about who's that person in your life. Um, and the other is to give yourself time. And it's funny because she was just she just left a little while ago and she said, thanks so much. I know you're, you've got this big project on the go with, you know, with your um, online course, but you made time for me. And I'm like, of course I did. You're really important in my life. And to, but not only that, it's I mean, yes, I did it for her, but I did it for me, too. Right. So it's important to find that time to carve out time to schedule it. So we actually went out of the city and took time time away. Um, so time. Um, and space, so as I said, we went away out of the city, just had time for us and, and that person. So um, those would be really important, as I would say, um, to uh, have that successful time to dream. Um, so where do dreams come from? So I, I was thinking about that. It, I don't think that necessarily is in here, but as I was working this through a little bit more with my notes, um, I was thinking that sometimes my big dreams have come from a need, that somebody said, and I don't know if you've heard this before, somebody should invent that, right? So, right, and it's like, yeah, they should, right? And then that kind of passes by. But instead of saying somebody should invent that, write down that idea, write down that need. Um, and, and as you write it down, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes, um, that that is already a declaration by writing it down. And then the other thing is, so need, that would be one of them. Um, sometimes you can be inspired by others so as they're dreaming aloud that it promotes and provokes your own creativity and thoughts right so that you're like yeah we could do that i mean this happens with my girlfriend we bounce back and forth right it's like yeah we could do this yeah we could do that right and then it's like these ideas get bigger and it's like it webs right and becomes this great big uh, brainstorm and then i think other times too i'm inspired by others so when i see people that have achieved their dreams um, and I think, wow, you know, not a, in a comparison way, but in an inspired admiration, right? That I think, wow, if they can do it, um, I can do it too, right? So I think those are some of the ways. What do you think? Where do you think big dreams come from? Those are, those are some of my ideas, but um, write your comments below. Um, I'd love to connect with you. I've got Melanie here from the Hub Creative Group and she's um, tracking people that are watching. And um, so if you are watching, just um, let me know, uh, put a heart down there, put a thumbs up, let me know if you're getting any value out of this content that I'm giving you here today. Because as I said, I've got two more uh, for the rest of this week and I want to make sure that it's of value to you and that you know I appreciate you taking your time out this afternoon to, uh, to tune in. So uh, let's see, what else? Oh, one of the other ways I forgot about where dreams come from, because this is often, I have this where people are working on their vision board and they're putting all their images down and then they're talking me through and then they'll say, but you know, I always wanted 
whatever it might be, right? And I'm, where is that? That's not on your board. I'm like, yeah, I know, but that, that was childish. That was like years ago and like that's not realistic, right? Well, exactly. Dreams aren't supposed to be realistic, right? That's the whole point. They're dreams. They're big. So, um, so childhood. So go back and think in your childhood, what did you want to be when you grew up? Right? What were those big dreams that you had? So that's another source as well. So I'm uh, just going to put my glasses on here so I can see some of my notes that I wrote to make sure I stay on track. Oh, good. Um, how can I overcome my fear of sharing my dreams? I'm afraid of failing publicly. That is an awesome question. So I would say that not everyone deserves to hear your dreams. I, I was challenged before about the actual name of, of my company, which is Dare to Declare. And someone said, you know, that sounds so bold. It sounds so loud. It sounds so public. Declare, right? But declaring can be to you. I'm declaring to myself. So um, I think there's power in declaring. But as you do it, as it becomes a habit, you're going to build that confidence. You're going to get that feedback. And that will make it perhaps that you can um, open up that circle of influence to a larger degree. But I think initially it's to um, put those dreams in a circle of people. And that could, I would say very small. As I said, I was out with my girlfriend this weekend and I completely trust her. I don't have a huge circle, like in terms of my, my inner circle is very small. And they really truly know my, my biggest, wildest dreams. And then I, as I work through those, I'll share them with a larger group. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there any other questions? Okay. <laughs> Keep them coming. I love that. It helps make me think. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's awesome. I love that. Um, and I think that um, if you have joined uh, the Facebook group, and I hope that you do join, uh, join the, um, the Facebook group under Dare to Declare, um, one of the questions that when you click into that is I ask, what's your biggest fear about making a vision board? And I would say 80% of people say that they're worried about failure. So this is the part that's so exciting about dreaming, because I would challenge you to be, get into your inner child thought process. Dream as though you cannot fail. Children have no problem doing that, right? Like you ask them, what do they want to be when they grow up? I want to be an astronaut, right? They don't think, oh, geez, how am I going to be, you know, go to school, do that? How am I going to rocket? How am I going to go, you know, get all that training? How am I going to get to the moon? No, I want to be an astronaut, right? Like they just dream big. So getting into that mindset of your, of your childhood, um, of children and how they don't have those kind of barriers or those limiting beliefs. Um, so when you're dreaming big, uh, make sure you have a notebook, some kind of notebook with you. Um, I actually keep notebooks all around. I have one in my purse. I have one in my bathroom, actually. So in the middle of the night, if I have this inspired um, idea that I, I write it down in the middle of the night so I don't lose it. So make sure that you record those ideas. It doesn't mean necessarily you're going to be able to do all of them or that you're going to focus on all of them, but that they're not lost, right? Because those big ideas, and it may be that it's not the connection right at that point, but then down the road, somebody else connects to that and you're able to work that out further. Um, so I already said to you about dreaming as though you cannot fail. The other great quote I love, this um, is from a gentleman, um, Andrew Grupo. I met him here, if you want to follow him on Twitter. Um, he had a quote, and I use this actually in my workshop, that says, the, um, the only weakness that you should feel is the weakness in your knees from the excitement of your dreams. Um, and I love that, right? So that your dreams are so big that you get weak in the knees from the excitement of them. Uh, we have one more question. Awesome. How can I separate personal from work dreams? Hmm. I, I wish you were here because I, I, I'd like to ask back why. Why would you want to separate them? So because um, I've had numerous requests to, from employers who want to do a vision board as a workplace like strategic plan. And I've turned them down. And um, because I'm not really interested in that, because I, this is not professional development, although it is, I'll, I, it's personal development, which then becomes professional development. So when you take, uh, and what you'll be doing here in, 
I'll be talking a little bit more about this online course I'm so excited about, but it has seven areas within your life. One of them being professional, one of them being continuing education and spiritual, but it's a whole um, full circle of your life in all seven areas. And that's the holistic way of looking at that. So I wouldn't split them to say it should just be work goals and just personal goals. Um, I do another workshop um, called uh, Life Work Blend. And I was asked last summer to, to construct, to build this curriculum for this workshop. And the organizer said, can you do a workshop on life work balance? And I, I said, sure, right? And then as I started to work with it, I thought it's not about balance. It's not about, you know, more, more life, less work, or, you know, less, you know, either <laughs> the other way around. It's really truly, I think, full satisfaction in life is learning to blend those together. So I hope that answers your question. Thanks, that was an awesome question. Awesome, thank you. As I said, I hope that you're getting some value from this uh, here this afternoon to spend your time with me. Thank you so much for doing so. And if you are, please give me a thumbs up, put down a heart down below, send me some love. Um, and if you're watching this later on the replay, put in replay so that I know um, and give me your thoughts as well. Um, I actually had someone uh, that re recently came to a workshop and one of the things that I put in there is um, I asked people to, to finish the, the phrase, I will. So what did you come here today hoping that you would get from this process? I will. And she said, I will dream attainable dreams. And so I, I looked at her because I knew, I knew what she meant. And it's like putting out your dream, but then like that first person that asked that question, what if, I'm, you know, what if I fail? And sort of pulling it back to say, but they're going to be attainable dreams. So I turned it back on her and I said, all dreams are attainable. Think about that. Right? So all dreams are attainable. Like, so um, I, again, just pushing her, nudging her to dream, dream bigger and not to put that barrier already in front of it. Uh, so one of the exercises that I'll do within this course and that, I, that is marvelous and often um, it actually draws out emotion is I do this exercise, which you could do as well, which is drilling down to what do I really want? So it's important to think about what do you really want? And most women that I meet, so sorry if there's gentlemen here watching, but I'm, as a woman, I'm gonna to speak to the women here, but um, don't take enough time to do that, to even think about that. And I actually had a woman at a workshop and she says, well, what I really want is I want my daughter to be a nurse. So I'm like, okay, but that's your dream for your daughter, right? What do you want? So I do an exercise where um, you work with a partner, you go back and forth for a period of 30 seconds, and one person asks, what do you want? And the other person answers with a one or two word answer. This person doesn't respond to it, and just repeats the question, what do you want? And the person responds. And what every person tells me through this exercise is that what they want is actually sitting about right here. And they had no idea because it just pops out. Things like, I want peace, I want love, I want to belong. I want, and it, it doesn't, it, and they're surprised. They think, well, is it a big house? Is it a car? Is it, no, it's much bigger, these bigger things, right? Um, and then that's where they're putting these on their board. Um, and so it's a marvelous exercise. So something you may want to try at home as well. So a uh, couple more things I want to talk about. Again, I hope you're getting uh, value from this today. Uh, if you are, again, please um, let me know you're here. I just, I'd love to know that uh, you got some value and that you're, you're here. So discovering what your purpose is, and I do not have time to fully work this out, uh, but I just want to uh, provoke this thought. Have you thought about what is my purpose? And if you're thinking, well, geez, Deb, that is huge. Like, how do I even figure that out? Well, a couple things I want you to think about is that I know for myself that what my purpose has been in life has definitely changed in my 20s, my 30s, 40s, I'm okay, well, that's, that's high enough. I don't need to go further. But um, four things will help you narrow down what your, what your purpose is. Thinking about what do I love? What do I love to do, right? Then thinking about what am I good at? So what do other people tell me I'm good at? But what, what am I really good at? What are my gifts? Um, and those will be unique from other people. The other piece is... Um, what does the world need, right? So, I mean, you can be, you can love it, you can be good at it, but if the world is like, yeah, there's not really any, any reason for that to exist in the world, then you're probably not going to be able to sustain it. And the last thing is, what can you get paid for? 
So again, as I said, same thing with the world needs. If you can't be paid for it, it's not going to be sustained. But when those four things intersect, so thinking about what do I love? Um, what does the world need? Um, sorry, what was the other one again? What does the world need? What am I good at? And what can I get paid for? Where those intersect is where you um, will find your purpose. Uh, so images. So when you're dreaming really big, it's really important. So the first part is dreaming. Then the next piece um, within this little booklet is chapter two is about digging. So digging in. So you've got your dreams. You've got some big ideas. Now to find images to represent those. And I, I really strongly uh, recommend that you find big images. So physically big images. For a couple of reasons, two really. Uh, a practical sense is that because your board is going to be sitting, you know, up on the wall, up in your closet, um, maybe behind you as I do in my bathroom, you want to be able to see it from a distance so that right away you know exactly what that image is. But the other is that it symbolizes big dreams, right? So they're bam, they're big, bold um, images. So you've, you're going to have a foam core board. Um, the other piece is you only have so much real estate. It's not like Pinterest where you just pin, 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 right? It's, it's, it's really just put on only within the borders of that board. So you've got to be selective on what do I want, narrowing it down, drilling down to digging in, what do I want in my life and having those images. So just by writing them down, so if you weren't even to do a vision board, but you were just starting to think, okay, I don't even know exactly what I want, but I'm going to start writing down these ideas, your goals are more likely to manifest by 40, let me just see here, yes, 44% more likely to manifest <clears throat> if you just simply write them down. And I can tell you story after story, I've been doing vision boards now with hundreds of people this past year, and I get stories every time I do the workshop that are, people are telling me that these things are manifesting for them, simply because they're focusing on them. So writing them down, 44% more likely to um, manifest. But then if you add images and affirmations, 78%, it goes up to 78%, they're more likely to manifest because of that focused um, attention on your images. So a couple last things for you that I wanna leave with you. And as I said, thank you for watching. If you're getting a value from this, please uh, let me know, give me a thumbs up. Um, one, a couple of things that, <clears throat> excuse me, that happen when people do a vision board is sometimes they get confused with their dream and I'll go back to the woman that said, I want to dream attainable goals. And so what they do is the goal is over here and they really do know it, but they don't eat, they're not, they're afraid to declare it. So they put in the how. So here's an example of that. Um, I had a lady, she put it in a beautiful organized closet. So I challenged her, I said, that's a beautiful organized closet. Is that your goal to have beautiful organized closets? And you're just going to be like, hmm that is gorgeous, right? You're just going to sit in your closet and just think, this is beautiful, right? She's like, no, 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 not, no. So I said, okay, so that's the how. So ultimately, what is your goal? How are you going to feel when you have organization within your house? Because I'm imagining that this organized closet is representational of organization. Well, I want to feel peace. Aha, okay. So let's dig deeper into that, right? What does peace look like? And going back to the work goals or the life goals, it's much bigger. Peace goes into all different areas within your life. So how can you find that and represent that on your board? So digging in a bit deeper and not just getting caught up on the hows, but to really declare your dreams. And then the other thing that I would say that I see sometimes on people's boards is shoulds. So um, I see, I'll, I, have, I have twin daughters and they tease me sometimes, especially my board, my current board, and they're like, mom, where are we on your board, right? And I'm like, well, you're not my goal. I already have you in my family. Like, and you're, ev you're over every week. <laughs> Just kidding. But they, um, you know, th it's true. But really, my goal is to spend time with them as a family. So I've got that on there, but not necessarily a photo of them uh, because they're in my life already. So you don't need to have shoulds. So I hear that about sometimes spouses or people um, think, well, this was my parents' dream for me. So I should have this on my board. So again, catch yourself within your own language and um, think, is that a should or is it really my big dream? So three words I want to leave with you 
um, as you're digging in and will lead us into tomorrow. So I hope you come back tomorrow. Again, same time, same place at two o'clock tomorrow. I'll be back for another um, live training um, is ask. So ask for what you want. So what do you want? Ask for it. I took a fundraising course years ago and they said, ask the ask. Don't beat around the bush. Put it out there. What do you want? Um, the other is believe. So believe that it's going to manifest. That actually was my power word last year is to rest and surrender into the process of this will be coming into my life and then be ready, be open to it showing up because it will. And, but um, I've had this question before as well. Will it show up exactly how I think? No, probably not. It'll probably show up in more beautiful, marvelous ways than you ever imagined. And I love when that happens. I, I love surprises. So, um, but you need to be ready and in a state of gratitude to see when those things will manifest for you. So ask, believe, uh, receive. Those are the three words I want to leave with you. And I don't know, do we have any other questions? No other questions, just Lauren said hello. Oh, <laughs> hi Lauren, thanks for watching. So um, again, if you are um, here watching, please say hello, uh, drop me some love, and uh, if you're on the replay, let me know that as well. And feel free to, to drop questions in the replay uh, because I'll see those and I'll respond to those as well. And that will help guide me for tomorrow so that I know I can give you the best content um, for you. So cheers, uh, thanks again, have a, a dry Monday. I hope you stay cozy and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, cheers.